The Dark Fire by Roaring Fire Gear. Is this the uh, jack of all trades of EDC bags? Hey, the humble southpaw here. Before we get into the video here, the review of the Dark Fire, just a few things I want to just bring up here, and I just want to go through somewhere, somewhere in detail. But first of all, this uh, bag was purchased by me. It was not sent to me by Roaring Fire Gears for review. Um, so just that's the first of all uh, I wanted to say. Second of all, for YouTube sake, uh, YouTube compliance, every firearm that's going to be used in this video has been checked and cleared, and they are not. There is magazine them, but they are not loaded. And third, I want to just say I'm coming in with some preconceived assumptions here, and I've got a list over here, and this is based on some reviews I saw, and, and especially watching a uh, suit rev uh, review on this bag, and he does an excellent review, <clears throat> and it has nothing to do with his review. Um, first of all, I said, my thing was, does this bag try to encompass everything, you know, or does it miss the mark? So that was one of my concerns in watching the review. Does it try to do too much? Uh, the second of all was, the straps going from sling to back straps. You know, was the sling going to be too big, too bulky? And then converting it to a backpack, was it going to sit up too high on the shoulders and in the neck and be uncomfortable in carrying things? And then lastly was, okay, this is great. I can go from a, a gray man to a tactical. And this is my own, you know, feeling of this. Would I do it once I had it set up either as a tactical bag or a gray man bag and you know same thing being a backpack and a or a sling bag would I be changing it that often so those are my pre uh preconceived assumptions so guys just you know knowing this going in but I am going to give this an honest review and some of my you know assumptions have been debunked and some are have not so let's go ahead and get through this um just <clears throat> start off with some of the specs uh, and I always get confused between length and height, you know, depending on who the product is, they have different ways they measure things. So basically this length here is about 13 and three quarter inches in length. The uh, width is nine inches and then they say height, which will be just basically here not including the pouch is about three and a half inches. So this comes in about seven liters, eight liters. Maybe if you, when you add the, the, uh, the pouch on there, you get another liter. So sure you're looking at anywhere from nine, maybe 10 liters. And these specs are based on uh, Roaring Fire's website. So, you know, it's not me measuring. These are their measurements. So I wanted to go so I can compare them across the board here. So just to get a comparison here on measurements and things, this is their slingshot. And this one comes in at eight, based on their measurements, 18 liters. And if you look at size, they're pretty comparable. But interesting enough, this gives you about another eight liters of capacity here. And, and my measurements were all done and calculations were done, you know, on a website that calculates uh, volume for luggage, you know, so basically putting in the, the three dimensions, it gives you what the liters are. And then the other one here, and this is a backpack, and this is their brush fire, with a, a recent release. And so again, and this one's coming in with their measurements, 16 liters. So again, if you're looking at it, they're all pretty much the same size, but this one definitely is a lot smaller in capacity. So I just wanna go ahead and just show you that, I mean, Get you a little comparison here. <clears throat> so, this also now, I'm going to just go through here. It comes with YKK zippers, which we all know are probably the best in the market. And all of their their uh, material that uh, Roaring Fire uses is excellent. So, I mean, all their bags are YKK zippers. Uh, this is 1050 Kodora Ballistic Nylon, which has a lot of advantages. You know, it's... Uh, resistance to UV light, so you're not going to get that deterioration. It's also very strong. It will not rip and tear. It's a uh, heavier weave, so it's more resistant to stains of oil stains, paint, whatever. So those are some nice advantages that you get with this. It's also water resistant, not waterproof. It says water resistant. So, you know, big difference. So waterproof means if it gets, you know, you drop it in the water, it sinks to the bottom at so many feet, it'll stay 
watertight, you know, nothing will get in. So it's water resistant, you know, to rain and all that. So that's a nice, a nice other feature here. So um, some other specs, of course, it gives you their standard water bottle, which you're able to adjust with the zipper based on that you get on the, the diameter of that water bottle. You'll get uh, some more mole uh, straps here on, on this side, um, on the, the straps and all that. Now with the gray man, because you're not looking to be tactical, you don't get any mole straps. And when we bring out the tactical pouch, you will see there's additional mole straps. So that is the specs of this, uh, of this bag here, guys. And so let's go ahead and we'll look in here and open this up. And then you got that and there's the tactical bag here, pouch. And I'll tell you, it's a nice, the system they have for changing it out is very nice. I'm very impressed with it, very good quality. Um, so basically you're gonna pull, pull this up, pull it out, lift up, slide it down. And it just pops out and then everything is attached, you know, via hook and loop. So this is all hook and loop material in here. That strap gets in the way. So then just take this out. I think you gotta tighten it up a little bit here just so make it a little easier. But basically here you can go bring this out. It'll hook right in. Same thing with this. It hooks right in very easily. Um, and then of course, you know, be hook and loop being so darn, you know, catchy in here, makes it a little bit harder. So then you can tuck that in, pull that in there. So now, now you got your tactical. So, you know, which gives you a little bit more room than the gray man, I think. And I'll open that gray man up in a second here. So, Again, you get some extra pouches, and then the gray man, there's not a So in there, it's a little thin, you know, in depth wise, or what just that, I forget what they call that height. So, but it is nice, a few things in there just to give you a sample of what's going on. So that's the gray man, that is the tactical. So, very nice. Um, it does what they call is a concealed carry pouch. And I think in my early, one of my earlier reviews that I did on the slingshot, to me, <clears throat> there's EDC bags and then there's concealed carry bags. I would consider this an EDC bag because it's really not designed from the bottom up to be a concealed carry. That's what to me, to me is the difference where this one, where like a Vertec or a Victos, uh, even your some of your 511, they're designed from being a concealed carry where you're able to draw draw from the bag without any uh, complications. This is just a <clears throat> a pouch in the back where you can store a firearm. It is not very flexible. It's not you know to get in access to it is a little bit harder. I mean, in my personal opinion, if I'm in a self defense situation. I would not feel comfortable drawing from here because I mean, there's a little bit too easy to have a, you know, discharge, an accidental discharge from this thing here. Plus they don't give you a holster for this. So to me, it's a, a pouch that could be used to put a tablet in that, but then they want to say, oh yeah, we can, you can conceal carry a gun in here. And you can, and you know, I'll show you that in a second here. The other thing is you don't have access from both sides. So to me, that does not make it a concealed carry. Plus your zipper is, is not multi-directional, it's one way. So it doesn't help being a southpaw or a right-handed person or just the way you want to hold your, your, your bag here. It doesn't give you the flexibility of, your, of the directional you're pulling that zipper, which you'll see, like I said, in other, that are concealed carry bags. They give you that. And I think even um, Mission First Tactical has an excellent bag. I have not purchased it yet, but they also offer like a multi-directional and, and two-sided two access to their concealed carry compartment. You know, so that is there. And just to give you an idea here, we'll start off with, and this is the Canik, and it is empty. Yes, there's a mag in it, but it is empty. There's no ammo in there. So 
I mean, you're able to get it in there. It will conceal it. But like I said, you know, and I'm not probably giving a good, but getting in there, you are looking for a possibility for an accidental discharge as you're pulling out the firearm here. So just to give you an idea, uh, this is the um, Kimber, which is a kind of a micro compact. It does fit in, like again, zip it. So the micro compact. And then this is my latest, which is the Ross Martin. Love this gun. Um, and like the Canic is kind of a Glock 17, Glock 19. This is also about a Glock 19 size uh, firearm. And then of course you're looking at the Kimber, which is about your 365, 365 XL size, a micro compact. I mean, it just doesn't feel, it's a little bit tight. It doesn't go the full length of the bag. And like I said, so I would not consider this a concealed carry bag. Yes, it's an EDC bag where you can carry a gun, but I would not be drawing from that. And that's my impression. And of course, you know, with practice, you might be able to get there, but definitely would not recommend, you know, drawing from that. And, and not even their sling bag. I love their sling bag, and I, but I would not be drawing from that. So um, those are things. So that is it. Now let's go with, talk about, like I said, the, the straps. And I'm not going to go into it, and I'm not going to break it all down, but I'm going to be honest with you, this is not a simple conversion. There's a lot of adjustments to do. If you watch uh, Such's video, you know, he mentions you got, you know, the best way is to take one of these straps off, kind of hook it to one of the D-links, tighten it all up, and then you got your one strap to use as a sling bag. You know, so there's a lot of adjustments. And then, you know, even when you're using it as a backpack, you know, you're doing all these adjustments so it fits you. And you're probably going to leave it, you know, to go back and switch it to a sling. Now you're readjusting everything. You're trying it on. So there's a lot to do with this. So that, to me, I, it is comfortable as a backpack. It's definitely not as comfortable as a sling bag. So I would use this probably more as a backpack. But then I might go to their brush fire. So... Um, so that, that to me is not there. So to me, that is one of the things that I don't see. So working on this bag. So let's go back and let's go through some of my assumptions. You know, it, is it an all encompassing? Is it a jack of all trades? I would say no, just for the fact that converting it is very difficult. That's my opinion. Again, other people might say, oh, no, I've had no problem converting it. So that's my opinion, and, and that's where I'm, I'm going to stand with this. And again, to me, trying to work it and trying to use it as a sling bag, the strap seemed bulky, and that was definitely what I thought when I saw the uh, some of the initial reviews. Now, what surprised me was the backpack. Using this as a backpack, it is very comfortable. I threw in some heavy you know, material weights in there, you know, laptop, and just to give me an idea of, of weight and all that. It felt comfortable. Definitely would, wouldn't mind using this. And I'll probably use it as a backpack, and I'll probably set it up as a go bag or, you know, IFAC bag in my car or truck. So definitely would do this. Um, and then going back, would I use this as a, you know, converting it back and forth between a gray man and a tactical? I think if you had it set up, you know, either as a sling or a backpack, Converting it, yeah, it's there, but I'm not sure. I'm lazy, so I'm not sure I would do it. You know, I have grab another bag that's a, a gray man look or a tactical bag. So what it is is set up for, I'm probably not going to change it. And one of the things, and I think, you know, they said in some of the videos, you know, you can leave, <coughs> you know, the pouches in, the other pouch in here. Yeah, you can, but it definitely takes up a lot of room and it does limit your flexibility. You know, I do love the lock, you know, loop and lock uh, material in here. So you can put smaller pouches, you know, EDC pouches to carry a multi-tool, a knife, you know, an eye, you know, a tourniquet. So it gives you that flexibility and I like that part of it. You know, it is a little bit small and all that. So, and I'll have to say, you know, I'll let you guys know, and let me see here, I did. They were doing a uh, another contest, and they were looking for people to recommend new bags. And I, I put mine in. I didn't realize you needed to have diagrams and all that. 
But I t kind of told them, I said, that they need to make a gray man sling bat. Just purely gray man. You know, make sure that the sling is, is like, like on the slingshot, is ambidextrous, um, very easy to adjust. <clears throat> they need to make the concealed carry compartment, design it around concealed carry. So it has multi-directional, you know, zippers. It has access from both sides. So if you're left-handed, right-handed, and just the way you're carrying that bag. You know, and then I also said, you know, they need to include, even if it's an accessory that you can purchase, a holster that will work uh, in this in the bag. So to me, those are some of the things I recommended. You know, then they should look at doing multiple different sizes, a small one, you know, a larger one or an extra large, and then colors, you know, definitely do the black, but also look at a, you know, dark blue, bluish gray, or even a gray colored bag. So, you know, bringing that gray man that it looks discreet. So those are some of the things I would recommend, but now would I recommend this? I could I have to say no I would not for the price I would not recommend this bag um, I would recommend either their slingshot or their brush fire and they also have a new one out the Dagon which is the brush fire but it is in a canvas um, wax canvas very nice bag and like I said I you've been using these both of these bags a lot the uh, brush fire has a lot of and I'll do a review on the brush fire I use that to carry my uh, video equipment to the range and all that so it's definitely a nice bag but i could not recommend this bag i would recommend the other two uh guys i hope you uh, found this review helpful please give it a thumbs up uh, if you're looking for more information and videos from a southpaw's perspective please subscribe and definitely share and be safe